Hello friends, subscribe our channel and press bell icon to get the notification of new video. Thank you. Join our WhatsApp group to get daily latest updates. It's totally free and all the best for this test. The test is in four part, part one, part two, part three, and part four. Now look at part one. You'll hear a discussion between a customer and a telecaller regarding subscription to internet plans. First, you have time to look at questions one to four. Hi, I wanted some information regarding your internet connection plans. Sure, sir. I will be happy to assist you. Can I please take your name? It's Kevin. And your surname, please? Weinhardt. Kevin Weinhardt. That's V-I-N? No, 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 no. It's W for West, E for Education, I for Immediate, N for Nottingham, H for Human, A for Apple, R for Round, and T for Trump. Got it. So you were saying you wanted to know about our internet plans. We have two types of broadband plans, limited usage and unlimited usage. Which one would you be interested in? The unlimited usage sounds better. What is included in that and what are the charges? So, we have three schemes in the unlimited category. In scheme 1, you get 4 Mbps of speed. In scheme 2, you get 10 Mbps of speed. And in scheme 3, you get 20 Mbps of speed. And how much do these cost? Scheme 1 will cost you $15 per month. Scheme 2 will cost you $20 per month. And Scheme 3 will cost you $25 per month. If you pay for 3 months up front, you get a 10% discount. Before listening to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 4 to 7. Now listen and answer questions 4 to 7. I think I would like to opt for the 10 Mbps scheme. Can I place a request for a new connection over the phone? Or will I have to come down personally to your office? You can place your request over the phone, sir. I'll take down your details right away. Can I start with your address, please? Sure. It's 95 Midtown Avenue, Knightsbridge Wharf, London. And your telephone number, please? It's the same number that I'm calling from, 876-54345. Got it. How will you be making the payment, sir? Um, can I pay by cheque? You can, but we'll have to wait for the cheque to get cleared before we install the connection at your place. However, if you pay by credit card or cash, we can complete the installation today itself. I don't have a credit card. Will a debit card work? Yes, of course. You can pay by a debit card as well. Should I initiate your payment? Yes, please. Before listening to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 8 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 8 to 10. Is your card MasterCard or Visa? It's MasterCard. 
Actually, no. I'll use the other card. This one is Visa. And your card number, please? You mean my bank account number? No, sir. The number that is printed on your debit card. It will be a 16-digit number. Right. It's 4532-7654-8907-1122. Allow me to confirm the number. It's 435276. No, you got the first part wrong. It's 4532. Oh, OK. So, it's 4532-7654-8907-1122, right? Yes, that's correct. I have taken down your card details. In a few minutes, you will get a payment confirmation message from your bank. OK. So, when will the installation be completed at my place? Our technicians will visit your place between 5 and 6 p.m. today and complete the installation. Great. Thank you. You've been a great help. You are welcome, sir. You have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. You will hear a child psychologist talk about the importance of having a hobby. First, you have time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen and answer questions 11 to 15. Having a hobby is truly essential for healthy mind and body. Not only are they fun, hobbies can refresh one fully, assist in staying healthy, active and happy. It is a proven fact that spending time doing the things that we enjoy can help delay aging and lead to positive feelings that help fight against certain illnesses. Hobbies make you happier and more contented as a person. Not only is this good for your general health and well-being, but it also increases your satisfaction with life and brings you peace, pleasure and excitement, and makes you easier to live with. If your days are filled with nothing but client meetings, projects and non-stop work, hobbies can help ease some of that stress and take your mind off work. Several research studies have shown that people who engage in hobbies are less likely to develop memory problems. Hobbies are also known to stave off depression and lower blood pressure. So, not only do hobbies help you psychologically, they're also good for your body. Hobbies can be beneficial for your health in a variety of ways. Firstly, hobbies can enhance the immune system. Being physically active is great for the body in helping to enhance one's immunity. As a related study shows, physical activity can help prevent or maintain control in some chronic illnesses, such as heart disease, diabetic arthritis, and even some types of cancer. Physical activity done consistently over a period can also help in improving your overall quality of life and assist in longevity. Examples of such activities include exercising, playing sports, dancing, riding a bicycle, yoga, and even walking. All types of physical activity can be tailored for different levels of physical functions and abilities. Before listening to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20.
Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Second, hobbies can help improve your flexibility. Moving can assist in stretching the muscles and in turn improve flexibility. Try following some active hobbies such as walking, yoga, stretching, swimming, painting, tai chi or dancing to stay limber. Third, a hobby can help improve your memory. Many hobbies are devised to challenge your intellect and mental prowess and enhance your problem-solving skills. Most hobbies also offer mental stimulation in completing the task. Examples of such hobbies include word games, crossword puzzles, quizzes, Sudoku and card games. Fourth, hobbies can help you reduce stress. Most people pursue hobbies because they enjoy them and many things that we enjoy doing help relieve stress in our lives. Some of these activities may also help create a calm atmosphere to reduce stress. Examples include cooking or baking, gardening, taking a walk, singing, reading or playing a musical instrument. Fifth, having a hobby can improve self-esteem. Some hobbies involve other people which can create social opportunities and improve self-esteem. Living in the digital age broadens one's access to these activities immensely. Creating communities or groups online and participating in circles makes it easier and more fun too. Examples include card games, board games, shopping, knitting or scrapbooking. Finally, having a hobby can provide you with better quality sleep. Being more active during the day helps create a more restful night's sleep. Just be sure to do more active hobbies earlier in the day, so you can be sure to have enough time to wind down before bed. Who knew that having fun could have so many great benefits in life? So remember, having a hobby is as important as having a job. All work and no play definitely makes Jack a dull boy. You have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part 3. You'll hear a customer placing an order for a pizza with a sales assistant. First, you have time to look at questions 21 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 21 to 30. Hello, I'd like to place an order for a pizza, please. Sure, sir. I will take down your details. Are you calling us for the first time? Yes, I've just moved to this neighbourhood. Right. In that case, can I have your full name, please? It's Henry Marcel. Can you please help me with the spelling of your surname, sir? Certainly. It's M for Monday, A for America, R for Rat, C for California, E for England, A for America, and U for Uganda. Thank you, sir. Can you also give me your full address where you want the pizza to be delivered? It's 83 Upper Street, Islington Park, London. Can I also have the zip code for your address, sir? It's N11PX. That's N for number, the number 1, the number 1, P for promise, and X for Xavier. Can I have your telephone number, sir? It's 743-89022. That's 734-89122, right? No, it's 743-89022. Got it, sir. What would you like to order for, sir? I want a pepperoni pizza. Do you want it regular size or large? I think regular will be fine. And would you like something to drink along with it? Yes, a small bottle of Diet Coke, please. Will that be all, sir? Yes, I think that's it. 
How much do I need to pay? I'll just tell you, sir. Your total payable amount is £12. Would you be paying by cash? Um, can I pay by credit card? Yes, you certainly can. I'll just take your card details. It's 6580-2090-2162-3388. Right, sir. You'll receive a payment confirmation message from your bank in a few minutes. Your order has been placed and will be delivered to you in the next 30 minutes. Thank you for calling. You have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. You will hear a college professor talk about the importance of positive thinking. First, you have time to look at questions 31 to 33. Now listen and answer questions 31 to 33. A paradox surrounds positive emotions. On one hand, they are fleeting, like any emotional state. Feelings of joy, gratitude, interest and contentment typically last only a matter of minutes. Moreover, positive emotions are less intense and less attention-grabbing than negative emotions and are more diffuse. Yet, research indicates that positive emotions contribute to important downstream life outcomes, including friendship development, marital satisfaction, higher incomes, and better physical health. People who experience frequent positive emotions have even been shown to live longer. Indeed, a recent meta-analysis of nearly 300 findings concluded that positive emotions produce success and health as much as they reflect these good outcomes. How do they do this? How do people's fleeting and subtle pleasant states pave the way to their later success, health and longevity? Fredrickson's broaden and build theory of positive emotions outlines a possible path. Because positive emotions arise in response to diffuse opportunities, rather than narrowly focused threats, Positive emotions momentarily broaden people's attention and thinking, enabling them to draw on higher-level connections and a wider-than-usual range of percepts or ideas. In turn, these broadened outlooks often help people to discover and build consequential personal resources. These resources can be cognitive, like the ability to mindfully attend to the present moment, psychological, like the ability to maintain a sense of mastery over environmental challenges, social, like the ability to give and receive emotional support, or physical, like the ability to ward off the common cold. People with these resources are more likely to effectively meet life's challenges and take advantage of its opportunities, becoming successful, healthy and happy in the months and years to come. Thus, the personal resources accrued often unintentionally, through frequent experiences of positive emotions, are posited to be keys to later increases in well-being. Put simply, the broaden and build theory states that positive emotions widen people's outlooks in ways that, little by little, reshape who they are. Before listening to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 34 to 36.
Now listen and answer questions 34 to 36. The key hypothesis of the broaden and build theory have received empirical support from multiple laboratories. First, the broaden hypothesis holds that positive emotions broaden people's attention and thinking. Experiments have shown that, relative to neutral and negative states, induced positive emotions widen the scope of people's visual attention, broaden their repertoires of desired actions, and increase their openness to new experiences and critical feedback. At the interpersonal level, induced positive emotions increase people's sense of oneness with close others, their trust in acquaintances, and their ability to accurately recognize individuals of another race. The empirical evidence is mounting then that positive emotions broaden people's attention and thinking in both personal and interpersonal domains. The second part of the theory, the build hypothesis, holds that positive emotions set people on trajectories of growth that, over time, build consequential personal resources. To date, the empirical evidence for the build hypothesis has been largely indirect. Prospective correlational studies have shown that people who, for whatever reasons, experience or express positive emotions more than others, show increases over time in optimism and tranquility, ego resilience, mental health, and the quality of their close relationships. Before listening to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 37 to 40. Now listen and answer questions 37 to 40. The type of research we have conducted has been virtually non-existent, largely because resources are expected to accrue only after many experiences of positive emotions over separate occasions, which necessitates a longitudinal design as well as a reliable, repeatable method for evoking positive emotions. The well-documented hedonic treadmill effect assures that emotion elicitation techniques used with success in the laboratory would likely become inert if repeated daily. As the novelty of an experience subsides, people's emotions tend to revert to a trait-like baseline. In our study, we sought to overcome this challenge by using an induction based on meditation. We suspected that meditation would outpace the hedonic treadmill for several reasons. First, it incorporates mindful attention, which has been shown to undo hedonic adaptation. Second, unlike watching a film or receiving a gift, meditation practice is active and personalized. Participants can lengthen the meditation, alter their focus, or otherwise try to get more out of their practice, keeping it within a range that is feasible but not boring. Most important, Participants can use the insights and psychological skills developed during meditation practice in many situations and life domains. Meditation then offers opportunities for enhanced emotions throughout the day, not simply during meditations per se. Meditation and mindfulness, which are perhaps best known as elements of Buddhist spiritual practice, have also proven to be fruitful topics within empirical research on well-being. For instance, for more than two decades, Kabat-Zinn and colleagues have reported evidence that meditation helps people self-regulate stress, anxiety, chronic pain, and various illnesses. Building on the observation that when formerly depressed individuals see their thoughts and emotions from a wider perspective, they are more resistant to relapse. Some scientists have developed a successful therapy that combines mindfulness meditation with cognitive therapy. You have half a minute to check your answers.